Everybody likes to get a leg up, a step ahead, be ahead of the curve, choose your metaphor, in terms of what uh, the future is going to bring, maybe especially regarding work. Uh, amid the COVID economic shutdown, there have been a lot of lost jobs, a lot of jobs that are more precarious, and so it may be more important than ever to try to get uh, a little bit of an edge in, uh, in the world of work. Um, I've been privileged over the past uh, number of years to have, uh, for Time Magazine, to have asked me to uh, write my predictions for the year related to work, and more, more recently, Psychology Today has asked me to do that. Um, and I've just uh, crafted what I think are my, uh, uh, my best predictions for 2021 and, and beyond regard, regarding the world of work. Um, you know, I think, to be really honest, a little modesty here, um, I think the accuracy of my previous predictions have been based on the fact that I recognize that it's more fun and exciting and sexy uh, and dramatic to uh, propose radical new ideas, but they too often uh, turn out to be untrue. Um, I've made a judgment that my best shot at accuracy is to be less bold and simply identify trends that are likely to continue. And that's what I'm going to do here. So um, first, uh, again, these are not going to be revolutionary, but I think they're also more likely to be valid and therefore actionable with less risk than if I had been uh, more adventurous in my predictions. And the first is that there'll be ever more work that's assisted, not replaced by, assisted by artificial intelligence. The robots aren't coming so fast, but artificial intelligence assisted jobs are. There's been a lot of progress in artificial intelligence. It's been all dwarfed by all the COVID stuff, but there's been progress in artificial intelligence and its subset, which is machine learning. By the way, machine learning means that, in short, it means that computers are teaching themselves based on their mistakes and their correct answers and continuing to improve their algorithm. Anyway, um, there have been big improvements in that, and, and they will improve our lives and create jobs. I'll give just a few examples. I'll give a COVID example first. You know, uh, we see that telemedicine is becoming ever more pervasive. It should have been a decade ago, but COVID is accelerating the move to telemedicine. It's more convenient, it's cheaper, and there's so much that can be done remotely, even remote tests that can be, where they, where they can be sent electronically to the, uh, over the internet to the doctor or the nurse practitioner or whatever. Um, that and with the ease of Zoom, Skype, FaceTime, etc., um, artificial intelligence, which can help assist in diagnosis and recommend treatments, but not make the definitive diagnosis, because still good doctors, good health practitioners, look at the subjective, you know, skin tone, the kids are, you know, uh, pay breathing, gait, all kinds of things. Um, so. But I do believe that AI-assisted telemedicine will, will grow. I think gene editing will grow as we see that, of course, environment matters, but ever more, we're ever more knowledgeable that genes represent a predisposition to diseases, toward various attributes in a human being. It's like a, a Volkswagen uh, in a race against a Porsche. Uh, you know, the engine is the genes, and no matter how much you tune them up, that VW is unlikely to uh, be able to beat the Porsche. So understanding the ever more important role in, in genes and everything from uh, uh, diseases to also characteristics, even like impulse control, um, means that we're gonna be looking to gene editing ever more to try to make sure that children are born without a genetic one or two strikes against them. Um, also artificial intelligence uh, is going to be used as an assist, again, to people in, um, uh, in well, maybe some of this is even going to be self-contained. You know, if we're, we're always trying to come up with the best match for a job seeker and an employer, uh, two romantic partners, or these days in the era of polyamory, maybe three, uh, matching even mentors and protégés. Um, I think we're still fairly crude in terms of how we do the matching. I look at the, uh, I've helped a number of my clients put to develop profiles for Match.com and uh, uh, Coffee Meets Bagel and the like. And uh, it's still pretty crude, but 
but I believe that moving forward, we're going to ever see more artificially and artificial intelligence develop paradigms for matching people for romantic partners. So my point is that there may well be an increase in jobs in anything related to assisted uh, artificial intelligence assisting. Next is greening. Um, it's widely predicted that the Democrats are going to win in the fall, maybe really win big. And that's going to mean we're going to see quite an increase in Green New Deal spending. It's going to include the obvious, of course, things like solar energy and other forms of alternative energy. But it may also result in an increase in the, you know, in nuclear energy, which is less popular, but is widely agreed even among many environmentalists that needs to be a part of the mix. Um, what else? Um, of course, subject to, you know, even less obvious, perhaps, maybe not. Uh, the Green New Deal is going to create more jobs in everything related to mass transit, and even less obvious than that, in regulation, people who are inspectors, creating regulations, monitoring regulations, that kind of thing. Um, another trend that I, I see likely to continue to accelerate is secular spiritualism. The Pew Center for the Study of Religion found that, except for Islam, which is very rapidly growing in this country and worldwide, the fastest growing religion is no religion. And it may just be, and this is just a guess, and I could be wrong, that Eastern spirituality, which is manifested heavily as by, by meditation and yoga, and obviously it's a big deal in this country, it just might join the ranks of fads that have faded you know, like the cigar stores of the 1980s, they'll go up and smoke. But it's a solid bet, certainly, that humankind is going to always seek, and not everybody, but lots of people, will seek something beyond the quotidian, beyond the daily routine of work and recreation and play, and etc. And I think ever more people are going to find that, that kind of spiritualism, that something greater than the everyday, in what I call secular spiritualism. And that's going to be in one form of that is going to be charity, whether it's how they spend their time at work or after work, or in how they donate their money. Uh, for example, I think there's going to be an increase in what's called socially responsible investing and impact investing. It's a little bit of a misnomer to call impact investing only that which helps the poor, because ideally investing in even Apple, which is working on the next iPhone, it would have impact as well on humankind. Anyway. Um, I also think that more people, this is a related concept, are going to start businesses that are aimed at the poor. For example, and this is iconic, um, making of microloans. We all remember the famous Mohammed Yunus who started the uh, microloans, giving very small loans to very poor people to help them start businesses. Uh, there's a, the quintessential example of um, uh, impact investing. So. Um, the next area that, I, that I, a trend that I, will, I predict will continue is, uh, in terms of the world of work, is the focus on the basics. The economy's collapse because of COVID is unfortunately likely going to be with us for a good while. So you might want to consider working for a company that provides the basics, basic food, basic housing, basic transportation, and so on. And maybe a less obvious example, I should give you a little more examples of that. So basic food could be, you know, working for companies that, either farms that create or companies that dis that distribute or sell fresh fruits and vegetables, or basic housing, not the fancy two and three thousand square foot suburban houses, but more likely uh, in our slowed economy, very small apartments, uh, even micro housing. Uh, transportation instead of the typical uh, Toyota Camry, you know, focusing on very small vehicles that are electric vehicles. Um, and now maybe a less obvious example of uh, the basics would be to, um, uh, there might be, a, you, know, you have to rec remember obviously that ever more people, whether it's be by choice or because they're forced to, are going to be working from home. So there may be consulting opportunities in ergonomic consulting, you know, say helping, you know, make sure you've got the right chair at the right height, the right back setting, 
where the keyboard is going to be, the right mouse, uh, location of the desk, the, the, the monitor, all that stuff. Uh, there might be opportunities in consulting in wireless networking. You know, people don't want to be chained to their to their desk all the time. They always talk about how sitting is the new smoking, need to get up. So figuring out ways to enable people to do their work while moving around but still connected other than their phone, there may be consulting opportunities there. And also, obviously, we're spending a lot more time on Zoom, FaceTime, uh, Skype. And so uh, your reputation is going to depend in part on how well you do in video conference settings. It, uh, and there, there is an art to that. And so there may be an opportunity to do consulting to people who are working at home, participating in a lot of video conferencing sessions, and want to do a better job of coming off well. You know, everything from the lighting in the room to how you talk to how you look at different people to what you say. Uh, okay, another trend that I see likely to continue is that jobs are going to move more, ever more, they already are, but moving more from the private sector to the federal government sector. There are, um, as I said, it's likely, to, likely there'll be big wins for the Democrats in November, and that suggests uh, that there will be additional taxation and regulating of companies, which atop the economic shutdown because of COVID is going to reduce their hiring in the private sector. And conversely, the federal government will likely grow. Democrats, especially left-leaning ones, uh, believe in, in bigger government and in uh, economic policies that are not just Keynesian, but what are called modern monetary policies, which encourage lots of debt. And I'll leave to another day, partly because I don't, I'm not expert enough to comment. But I think it's pretty likely. And uh, uh, so because the government will likely increase its size, even if at the risk of ever more debt, um, federal government jobs are going to grow. And a plus for them is that they do tend, compared to the private sector, to be more likely to be full-time, fully benefited, and offer maximum job security. Next trend that I see accelerating is working work that's serving the poor. Today's racial roiling, um, forgive the alliterativeness of that, but it's, that's my sound by way of describing it without being political either way. Today's racial roiling, on top of acceleratingly powerful messages from society's mind molders, that is the schools, colleges, and media, that suggests that ever more resources are going to be allocated to the poor. I mean, fiscal resources, human effort, etc., And that is another argument for government jobs because the government tends to focus on the poor, as well as an argument for working in a well-funded nonprofit. And I say well-funded because there have always been many, many nonprofits that start up and small, but the cost of startup and marketing and infrastructure and everything ends up being so high that the, uh, they either go out of business or they end up not doing that much good because they're spending so much effort on the... Uh, on creating the startup and in fundraising. Um, so um, also, you know, if you're an entrepreneurial type and you'd like to serve the poor, you might walk your talk by starting a business that hires low-income people. I know of a few that did. I, to be honest, I have no idea how successful they were, but I know they were, I remember a guy who was uh, going to start a business uh, selling used bikes and hiring low-income people to do the fix-it work and cleanup work and other things, sales. Uh, anyway, um, so if you're somebody who would like to serve the poor, you might walk your talk by starting a business that hires low-income people uh, or gives and or gives a percentage of your profits to nonprofit organizations. You are listening to How to Do Life. I'm Marty Nemko. I'm uh, offering my predicted trends for related to work in the year 2021 and beyond. Uh, if you're listening to this on a podcast, this is the podcast of a broadcast on KSFP, Public Radio in San Francisco, 102.5 FM. Of course, if you're watching me on YouTube, I thank you for doing that uh, and encourage you, if you like this, to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll put all my radio shows on this YouTube channel, uh, as well as my uh, reading aloud of a number of my Psychology Today articles. Uh, and uh, if I am a career counselor, and if you choose to uh, want to uh, work with me privately, you can email me 
uh, tell me a situation. I'll either offer a little free advice or if I feel like I can be of help, uh, offer you an appointment slot, you can email me at mnebko, that's M-N-E-M-K-O at comcast.net. Okay, next trend that I see being very likely to uh, uh, accelerate in 2021 and beyond related to work is the conversion of jobs to gigs. It's irresistible. Imagine you ran a small candy store, and option A is you're going to keep paying your workers 52 weeks a year with full benefits and extra rights against termination, whether or not that person's skill set is ideal for all 52 weeks. Uh, option B, you hire on a just-in-time basis. Maybe for a little while you need somebody to re-merchandise the store, to do, to do buying, to make the place look better, or do more sales, or uh, do more accounting, a little business. You know, so it seems obvious that most business, or not, most is too strong, that many businesses are going to choose to hire more people, not everybody, but on a just-in-time basis. Um, so, and many jobs that previously were full-time, relatively permanent positions, fully benefited, are going to be converted to short-term temp gigs. So, it's pretty important for you to keep growing your marketable skills as well as the depth and the extent of your network. You know, everybody can network differently. If you're not a schmoozer, fine. Get active in your online forums. Go, go to meetups. Uh, write articles for in your professional journal or professional website or whatever. That can be a form of networking. The next trend I see is the automating of white-collar jobs that are what I call fact centered rather than judgment centered. I mean, it's old news that repetitive jobs are ever more subject to automation and offshoring, um, but advances in artificial intelligence are likely going to eliminate a fair number of white collar jobs. For example, a, a low to mid level accountant where it's pretty mechanical what they do and legal research work. For example, a lot of the research on a given case requires looking through mountains of statutes and case law to find relevant keywords. And well that you know, and that could produce a mountain in itself and there is artificial intelligence programs which distills that into what's most likely relevant to your particular situation or the employer's particular situation. So the takeaway is that you might want to pursue jobs in which subjective judgment is important. For example, managing people or providing physical health services, being a doctor, a nurse, a nurse practitioner, a physical therapist, physical therapy assistant, or mental health services, whether it's a drug counselor or a cognitive behavioral therapist for garden variety, anxiety, whatever. The next mega trend I see is in security. Whether we're preparing for or responding to a pathogen, whether it's naturally occurring like COVID or a bioweapon, we, you know, we've often heard about um, bioweapons such as smallpox vaccine and anthrax being uh, used as a bioweapon, dis dispersed through the air in trains and uh, planes and just through the air. Um, and that's the kind of thing that keeps, uh, I, I spoke to someone who's a former CIA agent who says this keeps them up at night because uh, a lone wolf can do this. Anyway. Um, so in any case, um, the COVID pandemic is likely going to cause increases in hiring, not just of researchers and public health advisors, but across the entire continuum of employees. A lot of people don't, you know, don't remember that every company, even a biotech company, a big pharma company, has lots of people who are not biopharma people, for everybody from clerks to accountants. Um, of course, at the senior level, CEOs, although of course they are going to have a, generally have a science as well as a business background. Uh, although John Scully, who was the head of Apple, was previously the head of Pepsi Cola, and he was not, he was far from a techie. So, but anyway, I digress. Anyway, um, society has a short memory, so it tends to respond to the terrorism du jour. Um, but we really can, as we're moving forward, if I'm going to do any kind of valid predicting, 
We can't ignore Tellerism's other forms which are likely to rear their ugly heads, forgive the cliché. Um, there's a traditional bombing and shooting type terrorism that's on trains. I remember, for example, the underground, the London Underground had bombing, four bombings on it. And of course, uh, terrorism that have to do with airplanes was, of course, 9-11. Uh, I've also recently learned that on the very streets of Israel, almost 200 Israelis have been killed by lone wolf terrorists in just the past year. Um, particularly sad to me, even though I'm an atheist, is terrorism against worshipers. For example, I recall uh, last year there was the burning of Paris's incomparable Notre Dame Cathedral, and uh, they see the thing it's likely that the destruction of part of the uh, cathedral in Nantes, I hope I'm pr pronouncing that properly in France, is terrorism. Uh, and of course there is the massacring uh, recently of 11 people who were in prayer at Pittsburgh's Tree of Life Synagogue. And that there also are threats that have to date been largely thwarted. For example, threats that have uh, been targeting our food and water supply. It wouldn't be too hard. There's so many reservoirs, especially uh, not in major cities, but you know, I could see a terrorist throwing a dart at the country, at the, at the U.S., and ending up in you know rural Wyoming or something, a Kansas, you know, Kansas City suburb, and then you know in the middle of the night, poisoning it with some waterborne uh, bacillus or virus. Anyway, in total, uh, it seems a reasonable uh, certainty that the job market for people who are involved in preventing terrorism and responding to it is likely to be robust, alas. And the final trend I want to talk about is um, being is online education. Education has long been ripe for reinvention. Uh, I keep recalling the uh, a study that found that despite $22 trillion in spending on compensatory education to try to close the achievement gap, the achievement gap is essentially as wide as ever. And uh, also probably you've heard ad nauseum, uh, the U.S. scores near the bottom among industrialized nations in, in, in achievement. It's called the PISA exams. It's an international comparison. Um, it's true of writing and reading and math. And always, every year for the last number of years, number one has been China. And uh, we have been near the bottom, somewhere near Italy, if I recall. Um, but anyway, one of COVID's silver linings is that it has revealed that the, the, the you know, online education, which is so convenient for people who are just to have childcare issues, who don't want to face the horrible traffic, who don't want to park, uh, who may be disabled or in prison. Um, unfortunately, uh, online and certainly now amid COVID, uh, where everybody's got to, you know, is not going to classrooms. Um, there's, it's unfortunately that uh, that online education has not lived up to its to its promise. So there is a huge need for a next generation of online education, what I call ultra courses, which are taught quite interactively by world-class instructors. Once you find two or three great instructors in, say, a difficult subject like algebra, rather than the whole nation or world of algebra teachers, some of whom are great, but many of whom are not so great or worse, um, but doing that online uh, and using really rich videos and simulations and interactivity, you know, that has not been done too often. The, Online courses are merely, you know, pretty darn similar to what a standard course would be. You know, I think that there is going to be huge need for people to develop, not so much to, to, to implement, but to develop this, what I'll call, online education 2.0. Uh, in fact, uh, in the 1968 movie The Graduate, there was a young guy, I think his name was Benjamin Braddock. He was looking for career advice, maybe he was given it unwanted. But anyway, some guy came up to him and whispered to him the word, where the word that encapsulated what he thought the future was going to be, and that was plastics. 
Well, if I were to offer somebody uh, a sound bite of advice today, of course, it would depend on that person's strengths and weaknesses and interests, but if, let's say I didn't know the person, let's say it was a movie and I'm whispering to some stranger at a party, the, what I would whisper would be online education developer. In any event, those are what I think are the uh, uh, mega trends that are going to affect work in 2021 and beyond. I'll just briefly summarize them again. One is uh, artificial intelligence assisted work, greening, everything related to Green New Deal, secular spiritualism that is going to be manifested in giving money and time more to the poor, the basics because of COVID will probably have to be providing just folk, people are going to be spending on the basics less on luxury and that's everything from so smaller housing to not luxury items to basic food, base, etc. Um, another one, another trend is that, that I think more jobs will move from the private sector to the federal government sector. Remember, the government can always, the federal government, not like the local governments, can always print more money or do things with a, like quantitative easing, a nice soothing term, but it means, it still means that uh, likely all of our dollars are going to be, are worth less. But I think there will be an increase, especially if the Democrats win in the fall, uh, which I believe and most of the experts predict. Um, uh, there will be a move to increase the number of jobs in the government, the federal government sector. Now the trend working for serving the poor, I think that today's racial roiling atop the acceleratingly um, uh, powerful messages from society's mind molders and schools, colleges, and media are going to mean that ever more of us are going to want to allocate our time to the poor. The next trend is a trend from jobs to gigs. Full-time benefited jobs are just untenable for many employers because uh, uh, it's just not realistic that they're going to need the same person with the same skills in 52 weeks a year. They'll be that true of some individuals, but there are many, many people, many positions would be wiser served on a just-in-time basis where exactly the skill required is needed. There'll be an increased automation of white-collar jobs that are uh, fact-centered rather than judgment-centered. There'll be, unfortunately, an increase in uh, security jobs, whether it's bio, biosecurity, bioweapon security, natural pathogens like COVID, uh, and traditional kinds of terrorism. And finally, as I've been stressing, I think there'll be a tremendous need for excellence in next generation online uh, education developers who can really be masters at, at interactivity, gamification, uh, and, and so on. Um, it is true that he or she who lives by the crystal ball eats broken glass, but maybe these not so radical predictions may help you eat something a little better than broken glass. In any event, uh, this is Marty Nemco uh, reminding you that we find comfort among those who agree with us, growth among those who don't.